So I had one viewer leave a comment that there's too much giant ugly head talking and not enough boat work. So there's only one fix for that. Let's get to work. Ouch. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. So I'm still working on the dash, just trying to get everything lined up. And I'm gonna build a form. I started with the wood on this. I'll build the form all the way around so I can get this whole piece and then I can just start laying glass over the whole thing. Uh, so it just takes time to build out the form. Uh, I'm kind of an impatient person, so it's pretty hard for me. So here you can see I just whipped out a wood form with some tape and I'm putting some putty around that other board. Got a dilemma right here. It'd be much easier just to bring in this foam and uh, just tie into this piece and tie into that piece. But this is a pretty structural piece here because this is where the hard top comes up and my chain plate is down there and my bulkhead is here. And so this is the top of the, of the bulkhead which works like an I-beam. And so this can be under quite a bit of compression. And so I'm just not comfortable. So I think I'm gonna cut out this whole section. And as I cut out this section here, uh, then I can lay in the full glass and then I'll just build it back up on top. I think that's gonna be the, the smartest decision to make sure that this is fully solid. I found some blades that I like to use on my uh, little oscillating saw there. Uh, so if you're doing a project and you want some blades, I'm going to leave the Amazon link. I've tried several different ones and some work better and these seem to work pretty good. Also that Amazon is an affiliate link. So if you use that link, it will give me some money, uh, just a small amount, but it, anything helps. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm putting tape on that wood so that it doesn't stick. And all I had was masking tape. You know, I should use packing tape that that does a much better job, but the masking tape works in a pinch. A lot of people leave comments and say, oh, you should use this or you should use that or wax paper or this. And well, I just kind of use whatever I have and um, it works pretty good. The masking tape did, worked fairly well, but it left a little bit of residue when I pulled it off on the back, but yeah, it cleans up easy enough with acetone. What I like to do is I like to mix small batches of resin. And the reason I do that is because the, it are, sometimes if you mix too big of a batch, it starts to set up. It starts to kick too soon. And so I just mix small batches of around 200 grams each. Uh, and then I mix it. And then when I run out, I just mix another batch because I can mix it up pretty quickly. And that seems to work pretty well. Then it's time to break out the fin roller uh, and make sure you get all the air bubbles out uh, before I move on to the next layer. Yeah, I like everything that took a lot longer than I was expecting, but I did get the first piece of glass up here onto my dash. Got this board mounted and uh, glued in my main dash panel. So I think that's pretty good progress. I just need to uh, probably put a couple more layers in here. Probably not too much because I'm going to I'm going to also uh, fix it from the back side because it's the lower layer. Put the uh, foam back on and um, glass that down and then start on this section over here where I need to rebuild that post and that other panel that comes in. So while you're watching the time lapse, I thought I'd share a few of the comments that I get. Uh, so, so Mike left me a comment. He says, um, I don't know how you don't itch like crazy working glass in your underwear. Well, it's actually a lot worse when you don't wear underwear. Yeah, we won't go there. Okay. Uh, so, so then we have a comment from Tim. Tim says, I think you should be speaking to Elon about being on the, that first flight out to Mars, Brian. Not only am I convinced you could successfully pilot the ship, and now we see overcome the rigors of interplanetary space travel with some mind over matter techniques and a little cotton wool, but when the craft inevitably cl crashes on the red planet, I can only think of one person who'd be able to single-handedly build their own moon base fix up the ship, which anyone else would seem beyond repair before happily flying at home, all while recording the whole thing on YouTube. So I have to say that was one of the best comments I've gotten. Quite creative. Uh, that was after, that was the, on the seasickness video. And I don't know why people didn't like the seasickness video very much, but it's certainly not as popular as the um, other boat working videos. Uh, another comment uh, from 
Jedi Sonic. He says, you could save the Titanic if you were on the ship. Maybe if it was made out of fiberglass. All right, I'll get to some more comments in just a moment. Uh, what I'm doing here is what I learned from Andy on Boat Works today is walking the dog, he says, using the paintbrush to work out some some of the bubbles, and then going back with the fin roller. Next, I'm taking some uh, thickened resin, uh, and I'm using vinyl ester. People always keep commenting, saying using polyester resin. No, I don't, I'm not using polyester resin anywhere on the entire boat. It's all going to be vinyl ester, and if it's not vinyl ester, it's epoxy. So using the same type of thickened vinyl ester resin that I used before, I set the core in. And one of the problems that happens when you laminate core, or in like in this case where I'm laminating two layers of core to get thicker core, uh, is these flat surfaces, they don't necessarily join. And if you get the, the resin too thick in one area and too thin in the other, it won't bond in there good and you'll end up with a void. And so what I do a lot of times, if I have any kind of doubt about how well that it's connected, what I'll do is after I put it together, I'll actually pull it back apart. And then you can see if there's any voids and redistribute the epoxy if you need to, and then put it back together. So you'll see me do that here in just a second with this. Then once you have it all distributed and solid, then you're comfortable with the bond, it's important to use the, only the highest quality clamps to push it together. Or just use whatever junk you have laying around. All right. <laughs> Another one we got. Uh, uh, Foxtrot Whiskey Kilo. He says, how about starting with a broom and pan? Yeah, about that. It kind of does need a little cleanup, huh? Another comment from Patrick. Patrick says, you're working in a pigsty. It's driving me crazy. Please clean it up. Do all the demo and clean it up again. Yeah, why don't you come clean it up? <laughs> so uh, it's the way that I work, right? If you don't like it, uh, don't watch it. Now watch it anyway. Watch it anyway just so that it, it, uh, it bugs you. Uh, no, I was actually working with one of my developers today, and I said what makes the difference between an efficient developer and an inefficient developer isn't how fast you do things, but it's in what you choose not to do. And so for me, this is also why I'm not having anybody help me work on the boat right now. It, it's really dangerous for anybody else, right? For me, I'm used to it. I know my style. I know how stuff is set up. I, I leap over the floorboards that are missing. It's just not a problem for me. I'm used to that. I can work in that. But uh, I, don't, I don't dare let anybody else, I mean, be a huge liability to have anybody else help me right now. Uh, so that's why I've had some volunteers to come help. And, and probably when I get farther down the line, I'll probably be able to. But right now, there's no railings. There's no nothing. There's open stuff all over the place. It's just, a, a, yeah, it's pretty risky. But I'm used to that, right? So I, I just the way I walk, the way I, I handle stuff, I, I'm, I don't, typically don't get hurt. It was the same way when I built my house. And I only got hurt twice when I built my house. I'll tell you about the story sometime. All right, so we got the outside where we got this nicely formed with our single layer, how we like it, ready to build up. We got this guy here. So I've got uh, two layers here with some unidirectional uh, on this, but this just for this side of the fix, and then the other fix will get additional. And then uh, we'll round this up, fill this out here, and then this will uh, tie in from the top. The mold I made for this panel Turned out pretty good. It's got a really nice radius here. And I just did that with uh, with duct tape, actually, uh, between two boards, scrap boards I, I put up here. Uh, and so I put that in, uh, made this. And now, of course, it's not very strong yet because it's only got one layer, but it's perfect for building both on the inside and building up on the outside. And then last night, I also went and filleted this in here. So we got a good fillet. So as I start glassing this in, uh, it'll look good. I'll probably wait a little bit because I, I got to cut out all this stuff here so that I can tie this whole section in and I got this board's got to come out still. One of the beauties of the Antares is this uh, rack and pinion steering uh, or basically gearbox driven steering. So nothing's going to ever break on your steering. Uh, 
I say that, that this boat broke from the hurricane, but <laughs> it was just the, the ends off. But in a normal conditions, this, this, the steering, you'd never get this to break a, a wire steering or anything will break way before that. Uh, but I don't, I, mean, I think it's cause I'm sh short. I don't like where the steering is. So I filled in where the steering is and I'm going to extend this tube here and I'm going to mount the steering about two or three inches taller. So I'll put it here. Um, and I think I have a little bit of a clearance issue there, but I'll sort that, sort that out. If not, it can always move over. To, I know I can mount it right here. I know I can come up at a 45, but I'd like to come almost straight up and just put it as high as I can before this curve. So that's my plan. Now that the foam is all bonded in, I just need to shape it and get it just into position so that I can lay some glass on it. Here I start to shape the foam and put the final shape on it before I start laying the glass on it. Maybe in the future I'll talk more about chemical bond versus mechanical bond, but one of the things that people think is that you need you sand to get a mechanical bond, you sand it to put teeth in it. And that's not exactly correct. It actually has to do with sur surface tension. And uh, that's why you sand it. I mean, you still do the same thing. But that's why it's important when you're doing a mechanical bond that you sand it just before you lay the resin on. You don't want to wait or, or sand it like days before and then come back you need to re-sand it right before you lay the resin on because you're increasing the surface tension so that it'll actually bond to that so here i lay up mat first so that we create a bind between the mat and the other layers and that's when the camera died and ran out of battery so you're just going to see the final gap glass work here so this is right after i finish laying up all the glass and getting the the bubbles out So if you think back and recall what this dash looked like when we first started this repair job, it was cracked down, there was structural damage all the way through. And this is what it looks like now that the glass is dried and we've got the new glass on it. Starting to get stuff sealed up. This is the, the big section here at the dash where it was uh, leaking water. And my strategy on this, I think, is get everything to the sealed up state, which means back in position so everything's lined up, foam core back in place, glued in, and at least one layer of glass on top just to kind of seal things up. Um, and then I'll come back and grind it back down uh, and put the additional layers of glass, ferret in and do all that. Uh, and so you see I've got several sections here and here that I've done that also there and there. Now this other section where the post is there, it's kind of covered up. Uh, where the post is, this has got the final layers on it and this is all done up up through here. Um, so I just need to come back and finish fairing that and gel coat it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe with notifications so you can see next time when we start cutting this huge hole in the side of the boat. And it's gonna get bigger than this. I also wanna say thanks to all my Patreons. John G, Ken A, David O, Mark G, Verum F, Don T, Glenn W, and David M.